Hey, what's up, guys? In today's video, we're going to be talking about the strongest characters in Sumeru, the characters who got stronger with the new patch and that everyone should be using if you have them. Now, as you guys all know, new reactions came out with the new Dendro element, which is going to be core to a lot of new team comps and to the new meta going into Sumeru content. Because of that, we're going to be talking about the best characters for these new Sumeru or Dendro team comps, characters that increased in value with the patch and explaining the reasons why they're so good, as well as some general tips about them, the teams and how to build them. With that said, I do want you guys to know that I've had a lot of time to test out these new team comps and the Dendro reaction itself as I got to play on a media server before Sumeru was released. So a lot of the footage in this video and a lot of the testing that went into it happened before the game went live so that I could give you guys the most accurate information possible. With that said, before we begin, I want you guys to know that I do stream most nights on Twitch. Link in the description if you're interested. And without further ado, let's get into it. All right, so first things first, let's talk about what the new Dendro reactions actually are. While I might make a dedicated video on these later, and while I highly recommend checking out Zajef77's channel for information about specific reactions, reactions, the TLDR of what you need to know is the following. Dendro has many different reactions. If you use it with Pyro, it creates burning, which in general isn't what we're going to be building teams around, as currently it does not seem to be that strong. Quicken, which is what you get when you use Electro and Dendro together. And then there's sub reactions of it, which is Aggravate, when you use Electro on the Quicken. So Electro, Dendro, and then Electro again. Or Spread, when you then use the Dendro on the Quicken aura. So Electro, Dendro, and then Dendro again. And then Bloom, which is what you get when you use Hydro and Dendro together. And then that also has two sub reactions, Burgeon or Burgeon, I, I'm not sure, which is what you get when you use Pyro on it, and Hyperbloom when you use Electro. These are the elements that are relevant for these team comps. And so we're going to be talking about why certain characters of these elements are good and why they got better with Dendro's release and which ones you should be using in your Dendro reaction team comps. And also some characters of different elements that you might not be expecting and that are also really good with Dendro. All right, so starting things off, we're going to talk about a few Electro characters that are getting much more powerful in this patch. The first character is going to be one that many people have talked about and that I already made a dedicated video on, but that I do believe I have to cover again right now very briefly because of how broken they actually are. This character is obviously Fischl, and the reason why I'm bringing Fischl up again is because everything we've said up until this point has been mostly theoretical. We kind of knew that with current reactions, Fischl is pretty broken, notably because of her Ascension 4 passive right here, where also do Electro damage alongside any reaction you proc, any Electro reaction, and we know that this works with Dendro reactions, which made everyone believe that obviously Fischl would be the premier off-field electro support for Dendro. With that said, having tested Fischl teams out, I got to see many different reaction teams where Fischl completely carried and was honestly more powerful than any other character on the team, and definitely one of the best units in the game in this new patch. And so because of that, everything I said in my previous video is true, so you should definitely go watch that for more information. But now having actually tested it in Dendro teams themselves, I can safely say that Fischl is insane and a core member of many different Dendro teams. The reason for this is because Dendro with Electro in general is just really Really good. Being able to apply Quicken that has sub reactions with both Aggravate and Spread, and you can also do like Hyper Bloom, where you mix Hydro with an Electro character. In all of those teams, while there are many different Electro options that we will talk about in this video, Fischl is going to be the go to for the most damage overall because of how powerful she is and how good of an uptime she has with her Oz, where you can summon it and then you can use your burst to refresh it with your insanely powerful Ascension 4 passive, which we talked about, amazing constellations that you might have, as well as very accessible and really good weapons and the new artifact set that will buff your elemental mastery on Fischl, significantly increasing your damage when you proc reactions. Do keep in mind though, there are many sets for a Fischl. You can go Thunder Soother, Thundering Fury, mix and match two pieces, or run the new set as I mentioned, so you don't necessarily need to farm the new one, but it is a buff to her damage. And again, for more information, I will make an updated Fischl guide, but for now, you just need to know that for all the reasons that I mentioned in the last video and right now, and as well as in the footage that you are seeing on screen currently, you can kind of see how broken Fischl is. She's a character that I highly recommend investing in and using in pretty much any Dendro team when you need an Electro character. With that said, I do want to move on because I believe a lot of people already know how good she is and have been expecting her to get even better with this patch. For some other characters, first of all, I want to talk about Kuki. Kuki is a character who also got a lot better in this patch because she kind of has a real use case now. In the past, there were some niche uses for an Electro healer, but now in certain team comps where you are wanting an Electro option but also need a healer, Kuki can be that two-in-one for you. What is nice with Kuki is that her burst can apply Electro around her, which is pretty good for popping the seeds that are generated for a team like a Hyper Bloom one, which is where you would run an Electro and a Hydro character with Dendro, generate those seeds or Dendro cores on the ground, and then have your Kuki proc them herself. While I don't believe Kuki to be as meta-defining as Fischl, she is definitely a good option in the sense that, as I said, a 2-in-1 healer and Electro character who can be proccing the reactions for you, which means that her damage
damage can actually be significant if you are stacking Elemental Mastery, leveling her to 90, and running the new Elemental Mastery set on her, while also being the healer for your team, allowing you to run a more offensive Hydro option and not necessarily a Hydro healer, although once again we'll talk about the Hydro options a bit later. She can also run a Favonia Sword, which is an amazing weapon at giving your Kuki and your entire team energy through its insane effect. On top of that, in teams that are proccing Bloom, you can take some self damage by the Bloom's like Rupture effect, and so having a healer in your team is going to be essential, making Kuki a good option in that, as I said, Electro Healer role. For more offensive options though, as I said, Fischl will be favored or some of the other Electro characters that are also really good options like Yai Miko or even Beto and potentially Kaching, but we'll talk about her in a little. The reason why I mentioned Yai and Beto in particular is because you might want to run Dendro teams where you're running two Electro characters with them, and in these teams, while yes, Fischl is going to be a staple, the other Electro character can shine very well, especially someone like Yai Miko, who will just passively deal damage, or Beto if you are normal attacking, and can bounce your powerful burst between multiple targets. Yai Miko, in my opinion, is a really strong one in particular because having passive off-field Electro damage and a good amount of Electro application can be really good for Quicken slash Aggravate teams where you want that Electro application and want to be proccing as many reactions as possible. Before moving on from Electro characters though, because I do want to talk about other elements, I do have to say that for one, Beto can work very well as either a Fischl replacement for AoE or in addition to Fischl, using them together for just a ton of Electro damage. And I also wanted to talk very quickly about Kaching, who is one of the biggest winners of this patch. I will be making an updated Kaching guide as probably my next video, explaining why she's so broken with the new Aggravate reaction, but the gist of it is that there are just basically new Kaching teams, allowing her to actually apply a reaction consistently with Electro, which is the Aggravate reaction, buffing your Electro damage of your team significantly, making Kaching a very powerful DPS, especially when paired with another Electro unit like Fischl, and then good off-field supports like a Dendro one and an Anemo one to buff your Electro damage. This is why Kaching went from just a playable character to a really good one who got a lot better once 3.0 came out. Moving on, one of the biggest winners by far in this patch is going to be Kokomi. While we saw that Electro options in general are going to be very good, Hydro options as well will, but especially Kokomi because of how much Hydro she applies and because she's also a healer, which is crucial in some of these teams. Now, as we saw, you will need a healer because Dendro Reaction, specifically Rupture, can inflict self damage to you, which is why having a healer is so important. Kokomi is generally going to be your go to healer because let's say you're running a Dendro, Electro, and Hydro character. While you can run an Electro healer like Kuki, Kokomi is going to allow you to run offensive characters in the other slots like Electro, allowing you to run Fischl or your Aimiko, who do a ton of damage. And so while Kokomi will not only free up your other slots to be more offensive, she will also provide you with a ton of utility. What I mean by this is if you need to buff one of your character's attacks, you can run the Thrilling Tales of Dragon Slayers on it which is a weapon that obviously gives you 48% attack to any carry you may be running, and you can also run a supportive artifact set on her. If she's dealing damage, yes, you can run Ocean Hued Clam if she's on field, but you can also run either the Tenacity of the Millet set to buff your team's attack, or, and this is actually pretty important, the new Dendro set that buffs your Dendro members when your skill or burst deals damage. While this set doesn't look good for a non-Dendro user, as it's something that buffs your Dendro damage, it can actually be a decent option on a character who is used purely as a support. As you may know, an on-field Kokomi with the Ocean Hued Clam set will deal a lot of damage. With that said, if you're purely running her as a Hydro Applier who will heal you from off field and buff your team, you don't really care too much about your Kokomi's damage as she'll be very useful even without it. Because of that, you can run this new set which will buff your Dendro character like Tsihnari or any other that you may be running and you can run this set on Kokomi to not have to run it on another character. Although obviously the other sets that I mentioned can work as well and can be more generalistic. Because of that and because of Kokomi's two play styles being either on field or off field, really good Hydro application with as you know, uh, her Kurage, which is this jellyfish that will heal you and apply Hydro passively, and the fact that you can reset its duration with your burst. Because of that, I believe Kokomi is one of the biggest winners of this patch by far, but if you don't need a healer or are running a healer in your Electro slot, there are other good Hydro characters that are also winners in this patch. Now, first of all, if you don't have Kokomi, someone like Mona can work, but she doesn't apply like as much Hydro from her skill and won't heal your team. Still a pretty good option though, but for more offensive options, I believe characters like Ayato or Child, especially Ayato for consistency in terms of like his rotation and the way it works with his burst applying a lot of hydro can be a pretty good option. There are many offensive weapons you can run him on. He can be a pretty powerful carry while your off-field supports are out there proccing many different reactions. In fact, you can run Ayato in a Dendro team where you pair him with one Dendro support to make sure you're proccing Bloom and then either go for Burgeon where you add a Pyro character who will proc those Dendro cores that you generate that will deal some nice AoE damage or you can go a Hyper Bloom team which I personally have been enjoying where you add an Electro character to this team as well and then you can proc a ton of reactions with your Ayato being the on-field auto attacker. These fast on-field Hydro players like Ayato and Child therefore have new team comps to explore in this patch, and I believe they are worthwhile to invest into. I do want to say though that characters like Yalan and especially Sing Chu being an accessible 4-star are 
obviously going to only get better in this patch as many different teams will want that hydro support and sing is just a broken unit in general as you can see many variations of teams like hyper bloom can run sing for the simple fact that sing is just a pretty broken unit who has insanely high scalings now moving on for some other options that i want to talk about that might be a bit more unexpected is actually two anemo characters now while you can't swirl dendro as you may know anemo characters are still getting indirectly buffed in this patch because of how good they are for your overall team comps these characters are mainly going to be sucrose and kazua they're going to be present in so many different team comps that i highly recommend investing into them the reason why is because in many different dendro teams while you're going to be running at least one dendro unit your other slots are going to be characters that will proc the reactions and deal a lot of damage because of that having a character that can buff that damage as well as buff your reaction damage in general is going to be vital for maximizing that dps for example in a team like the one you're seeing right now where yes you have a dendro character but you also have fischl who does a ton of electro damage having a character like kazua who will buff your anemo damage through the four piece for Destin venerer and also his very powerful talent that buffs your elemental damage bonus is going to be crucial to maximizing your team's dps on top of that you can easily double swirl with someone like kazua if you're running a hydro and an electro character in a dendro team which is definitely going to be relevant especially if both your hydro and electro characters deal damage but obviously a bit less relevant if one of those two characters is just like a healer in general though kazua is going to be very useful for that and so will sucrose who is even better at pretty low investment but i do recommend leveling your anemo characters to level 90 because obviously reactions do scale amongst other things with your level so it is very important to level for sucrose in particular something you need to know though is that you do buff your team's elemental mastery just in general which is going to be very crucial as all these dendro reactions and dendro based team comps are going to run characters that rely on this elemental mastery are going to spam very powerful reactions and so stacking elemental mastery and getting this elemental mastery buff is going to be incredibly important on top of that sucrose is someone who can do a ton of damage herself by stacking elemental mastery with like a sacrificial fragments or in certain teams can even buff your team with the thrilling tails but uh, in this patch em seems to be very important a quick thing to keep in mind too is that these reactions are considered additive red plus aggravate so everything that's dendro plus electro the quicken sub reactions as we saw to not make this too confusing but do all scale with elemental mastery crit damage percent and your level so damage percent is going to be very important for your team's overall dps and for maximizing that reaction damage which is something that will be increased with Anemo supports like Sucrose Kazua, and especially when you look into something like Kazua's passive that buffs your elemental damage, as we mentioned earlier. Other reactions scale differently if they're like transformative, where it's only elemental mastery plus your level, but we'll get more into that in other videos. Moving on from these characters, I actually want to talk about Toma. For Pyro in particular, Toma is the character that is looking to get the most buffed because he can actually be a carry in certain teams by stacking elemental mastery and proccing the Burgeon reaction. In a Burgeon team, you're going to be creating those blooms, those plants on the ground, the Dendro cores, by using Hydro and dendro together after that if you use pyro on them it will do that burgeon effect which will deal aoe damage and is really really good in aoe because you can generate multiple cores and then you can blow them up multiple at a time it does seem to be two at a time so every skill you use can proc two and then each of them when they explode does aoe damage and a bit to yourself so keep that in mind and you probably want to run a healer but that aoe damage makes this team very good in aoe and makes the reaction pretty good because of that toma who doesn't apply too much pyro but a decent amount from off field will be good at consistently proccing this effect while not applying too much to where you can still have a good amount of hydro and dendro on the opponents on top of that at least for my testing and i'm sure there's going to be a lot of new things figured out in the coming weeks so stay tuned for a pin common and updated teams i'm going to make a detailed team video soon but toma seems to be a really good option at that off-field pyro as well as being able to run a ton of elemental mastery like the katane sphere and be the one responsible for proccing those reactions dealing good damage while you also have other characters that do decent damage as well well i'm sure there's going to be some other pyro characters that can work in this team but does seem to be the character that goes from right now considered not that great to definitely a viable and good option in those burgeon teams i do want to say that for burning in particular burning is a reaction that i have not mentioned yet this doesn't seem the best given the patch notes and because it kind of just doesn't really do that much damage it consumes the dendro from the pyro which makes it hard to combo with other reactions and from my testing it does seem like you typically want to avoid burning unless there's like a specific team comp you can build around it but for right now it doesn't seem as interesting as quicken which is electro and dendro and then there are two sub reactions and bloom which which is hydro and dendro and it's two sub reactions as well and lastly i do want to talk about the main character as you can see i am using the dendro form right now and that is kind of why this character is getting buffed and why you can invest into them and use them in many different reaction based teams as i showed in my previous guide dendro main character is going to be the premier free-to-play option or one of the premier options for a pretty consistent off-field dendro applier the reason for that is because their skill and their burst can apply a good amount of dendro enough to reliably proc reactions in many different teams you can run it on very low investment even without leveling your talents yes if you want damage for your dendro mc themselves 
yes, you can level these, but if not, you don't need to because your reaction damage will still scale based on who procs them, and you can simply just apply Dendro with this character. On top of that, you can run a supportive weapon like the Favonia Sword and a supportive artifact set like potentially the Deepwood Memory set to decrease the Dendro resistance of opponents, or even like Noblesse Oblige or something, so you can definitely use this very powerful support who doesn't even need that much investment. They are therefore a character that is getting a huge buff because they're getting a new element that honestly seems pretty good, especially because there's not that many other Dendro support options, and you might also want to make two different Dendro teams. And so overall, I do want to leave it at that for this video. As you can see, the biggest winners are some Electro and Hydro characters, with a few other elements like Sucrose Kazua for Enemo, Toma for Pyro, and also the Dendro main character. I got to try out these different Dendro team comps extensively, but obviously it is still a new update, so if there's anything new, do stay tuned for future videos and updates. For example, I do plan on making a team comp guide for the new Dendro reactions. With that said, I really hope this was helpful. I really hope you'll enjoy, and stay tuned for a ton of new Sumeru content. Anyways, I don't want to repeat myself, so I'll leave it at that. As always, feel free to sub if you're new, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.